Hey there, wrestling fanatics! It's your host here, Team Rai Rai, and back for a brand new episode of Team Rai Rai's Wrestling Podcast, episode number forty-nine. I have a guest here. Has been a while. Go ahead and plug your social media, man. Take it away. Hey, Rai Rai, what's going on, buddy? It is Boston Fans seventy-nine v one, and I am so very glad to be here with you tonight. I want to say thank you for making your podcast a part of my day and of course you can find me on all social media platforms including snapchat boston fan 79 v1 twitter boston fan 79 v1 facebook boston fan uh chris michaels and uh let's see here uh instagram boston fan 79 v1 tumblr chris michaels hdtv so yeah, buddy. Glad to be here. And, uh, Rai Rai, what, what do you want to talk about tonight, buddy? Okay, first thing first. I know everyone, or some people are, want Vader in the Hall of Fame. He's way overdue. You know, every time WrestleMania is upon us, you know, they have this little thing, should be in the Hall of Fame, and then it doesn't happen. I think he should be in the Hall of Fame years ago. What's your thoughts on Vader, Big, Big Vader? I love Hall of Fame talk. Right, right, honest to God. And, like, giving the opinions as to who should be in the Hall of Fame, and I don't see any reason whatsoever for Big Van Vader, the guy from the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, um, that guy should definitely be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, he's a former champion. He's a former world champion. I know. Um, He's had fantastic feuds including um, the one where I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he Ron Simmons um, got the belt from him, so he, he did Ron Simmons a favor by dropping the belt to him. And uh, just a lot of great matches he's had over the years, especially with guys like Sting. And, um, you know, his WWE career wasn't really too much to talk about. I think it was a lot of fluff. But, uh, I mean, big... Big Van Vader, that dude needs to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I don't like WWE's waiting for Christmas. It seemed like, quick example off the record, like Macho Man. They had so many opportunities. I know he was on bad terms, but now he's now he passed away. Now they put him in the Hall of Fame. Go figure, you know, Chris. Yeah, you know that's the way it all. That's the way a lot of it is with the WWE, and I think they're trying to maybe get a little bit better. But the thing is, we have to take under consideration, too, there's other factors that go into a, pi- a, a picking for the Hall of Fame. Not just Triple H's buddies. Yes. But when you think of, you know, names like Demolition, okay, why aren't they in the Hall of Fame? Well, as far as I, I'm, I know, I think they have some legal, they had some legal disputes with yep. WWE. Yep. Um. You know, then you talk, you know, I mean, the list could go on and on, you know. I mean, um, you know, so like the British Bulldog. I know. Why is it, or Dynamite Kid, why is it, why aren't they in the Hall of Fame yet? Um, maybe together as the bull, as, as the, uh, the Bulldogs, you know, the, um, you know, Owen Hart. Well, the thing is with Owen Hart, you know, you have to figure Martha's playing her cards, you know. Yeah, big so time. That's why I. So I don't think he's in the Hall of Fame because of her. Yep, that's sad. Should he? It is sad, right, right, and that's the way a lot of it is with a lot of these wrestlers. I mean, you know, take for again example. I mean, why haven't they put Rick Root in yet? You yep. know, I mean, I and the thing is, a lot of these people are past. They they're they're dead. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's uh, it's one of those just messy situations that, unfortunately, legal disputes or other red tape surrounds WWE. Yes, and uh, oh, what am I going to say? It's sad, and some of these Hall of Famers, like um, Cole could be aware. He shouldn't be in there. That's just my opinion, Chris, you know? Yeah, I think there's a lot of people... That, or it, not a lot. Some people that shouldn't be in there. Yep. Um, I mean, I don't know that big list off the top of my head because 
you know, when you get older, you have a tendency to forget some things yeah. here and there. But like, you know, even I would even go to say that maybe, you know, will X Pac ever go in? You know, because X Pac, he was a good mid card. Yes. He wasn't the best. He wasn't the best. You know, he was. You know, he was a good light head. You know, a lightweight contender, cruiserweight type of guy. Um, you know, and but it, you know, then again, I mean, he really kind of did a lot of good stuff in WWE and in WCW as six. Um, but uh, he, and especially during the Attitude Era, it, which is where I think he had some, you know, his best run. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, there there are people that should that should already be in, and there are some people that shouldn't be in, and really, that's all the way it goes. I mean. You know, I don't know if, I mean, would you induct the one-man gang, a.k.a. the guy that played Akeem or Tugboat? Uh, I don't know. That's 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 a tough, maybe, because these were not of a Hall of Famers, you know, Chris? Yeah, because they didn't really ever, guys like those two guys I just mentioned. You know, yeah, Tugboat, you know, he played a goof. I mean, he was the shock master, okay? Um, a guy that was really kind of laughed at. Um, He's a joke, so, right? He, he was a joke, and so wasn't really. I got to be honest, the one man gang. I mean, he he's the guy. That guy, same guy that played Akeem, is kind of a joke. Yeah, see, he was a he was a gimmick character. Yeah, they won't put him and, in the Hall of Fame. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, like I said, going back to Tugboat Typhoon, whatever you want to call him, the Shockmaster. He was what what. He was only what a former tag team champion with Earthquake. Yeah, big deal. You know, I mean, you know, we could go on and on about people who could be in the Hall of Fame, should be in the Hall of Fame, and people that shouldn't be. Yeah. Okay. Another discussion is is I think he's freaking good. He's Mr. Perfect. He has a great run. IC champion. Too bad they never give him the major belt because I think I know nobody will agree with me. Too much politics backstage back then and still. In this era, and I think his his son is good, but never as good as his dad. And I mean, I don't know. I just don't like when they have to. He should just come with his own um, um, name, not name, but his own um, stepping stone. Gimmick. What? His own gimmick. Yes, just like um, off the record. I know you mentioned on Facebook about Charlotte. You know. Yeah. And and I got well, no, one of my friend named Tony Talent. He's not a big fan of Charlotte because. Of Ric Flair, you know Ric Flair and W mess up Charlotte. Charlotte should just do her own path. Her own path, you know. I have said that time in and time out. Yes, she still has her father's gimmick. Yes, but she doesn't have him at ringside anymore. She's really, honestly, she's now the same Charlotte. We've seen on NXT, if that makes any sense. Oh, okay. okay. Because, you know, I mean, you go figure. Look at Natty, for example, okay? Natty is a nightheart, okay? She thinks that she's the best, has been the and will be the best. But the thing is, I mean, you know, especially now more than ever, now that she's a heel, um, she's going to ride that steam train all the way to title town. Okay? Yeah. She's, she's going to someday, you know, maybe by year's end, maybe by the Royal Rumble, probably get another shot and maybe win. Okay? Um, but, yeah, Charlotte, I am just glad that her father is not at ringside with her anymore. Yeah. I'd rather see Dana Brooke shine with her than Ric Flair. Yes. Ric Flair, no disrespect intended, whatsoever he just he's had his time okay just like you know like when the hitman Brett the hitman heart has come down to the ring with natty he had his time yes but now but now he's just salty as a pretzel he's always been um yeah i mean he that guy is so salty man holy shit um but i mean maybe that's what it's like being a former wrestler and a company in a company that has more politics than wrestling, you know? Yeah. Um, so you really kind of, sort of, I mean, but the thing is, 
for him to go off on like something as minuscule as a level of power of what you're at in a video game compared to somebody like Triple H, that is so trivial. Okay, um, you know, I don't know if you ever if you've heard that yet or not, but uh, yeah, going back to like Mike McGillicuddy, aka Curtis Axel. Yeah, he, you know. He was good when he was the Intercontinental Champion. Yeah. Okay. If he not exactly stayed in his father's footsteps, but if he kind of was booked to mold his own, but sort of still know that he's Mr. Perfect Son, I think would have done him wonders. But the WWE, well, what did they do? They threw him in a really crappy uh, faction. Oh, well, right back, yep. No, Mike McGillicuddy. They threw, they threw him in the so- social outcasts. Oh, that was a guys, stupid... Yep. With guys like Adam Rose and Heath Slater. Yep, jobbers. And Bo, and Bo Dallas. I know. That was jobs... That was Job Squad 3.0. Yeah, pretty much. It's sad, but he don't care. He he gets paid regardless because he don't care. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes. Yep. Um, who I forgot who, who is this girl who used to favor AJ um, Lee back then? She was very um, attractive. What's her name? Caitlin. Yeah, Caitlin. Do you miss her, or you could care less if she's there or not? Right. Dude, I follow her on Instagram, and holy crap, okay? I know, I saw um, pictures, wow. She she says that she is the healthiest she's ever been. She is jacked to the ceiling. Her, you can't tell me that she got a breast implants. She did. Um, but still, she's, is freaking... Drop dead gorgeous. Man. Yeah. Holy crap. Do you think she's taking yeah. stor do you think she's taking steroids, Chris? Uh no, I think she's taking just stuff that her and her husband take and um which is their own products because if you if you didn't already know, um Caitlin, Celeste Bonin, it is married to this uh, what the heck is his name? PJ or something like that. Um, she is the creator. She's a business owner of workout clothes. Oh wow! And and supplements. Oh. So whatever they put into their supplements, I have no idea what they put in. Yeah. But that, but that's all they take because like, there's an app called Periscope, and you will see like her husband. Like on, on a stepper, and he's you know drinking his little muscle shake, whatever it is that's in a shaker bottle, <laughs> and uh, he'll be on the stepper, an elliptical, a treadmill, and he'll be just be doing his thing. But he's a former bodybuilder. Oh really? Which is why, yeah, which is why he's like so jacked up, huge. Yeah, jacked up. Wow. He knows it's gonna happen. Yeah, I think he had like. I think he had like an injury or something like that happen to him, and he um, he stopped bodybuilding. He recovered, and um, you know just got back into you know regular training again. But that dude's still freaking mon- he's a monster. Oh, yeah. You know what's gonna happen? No offense, but if they keep this up, they might die. Um, oh, well, young young age, Chris. You know. Um. I would only say that if they were in the WWE. Okay. Because honestly, let's be honest here. The WWE, um, we've lost a lot of people. Yes, we have. And we've and we've lost them at very early ages. Yep. Eddie Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit. Yep. Um, China. I can't. China. I can't remember if Saturn is still alive. The guy with uh, Moppy. You yep. Know? Um. But just so many people, Roddy Piper, Owen Hart, um, 
just so many people. Yep. And, and we lost them at early, and we lost them at early ages. Yep. Sad. Whereas, you know, whereas if somebody like Celeste Bonin, aka Caitlyn, I think now that she's not in WWE, I think she'll, um, you know, live a, a heck of a long life, because the thing is, she's not a pill popper. She's clean. Yeah. She's as clean as a whistle. You know? Yeah. Um, I would have said if Caitlyn was still in WWE today, you know, and the way they treat their superstars medically, probably, um, and I know sometimes, you know, they, you know, doctors can mess up. They don't know everything, which is why sometimes a second and a third opinion is necessary. Yeah. I mean, you know, look at CM Punk. You know, they said, oh, what was it? A cyst on his lower back or something? That, um, this, as the story goes, um, they weren't really taking care of him, so he kind of lashed out at them. And that's what happened. A yeah. A lot of these doctors are, you know, basically, I, I feel, to, for the most part, put a Band-Aid on things and say, okay, go back to work. Make your money, you know. Um, but I think, you know, like I said, Caitlin, Celeste Bonin, she's better off outside, you know, the WWE than inside. Do you think she... I think she'd be perfect for Playboy, huh? With that body now? Um, I think she definitely would be Yeah. perfect for that. But I don't know if she'd ever do it, because I think, although... When you look at her pictures on Instagram, she's not that far from it. Yeah. You know? I mean, with them little, really small bathing suits that she wears, and her overwhelmingly big breasts. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just, uh, I don't know if she did that, but I'd say, like I said, she's, right now she's pretty close to it, man. Yep. Okay. Another th uh, thing is picking at Natalia. Were you a fan of her when she first debuted in the WWE? It took me a little bit. It took me a little bit because I didn't know she debuted with this, um <clears throat> with her now husband Tyson Kidd. Yes. And and with um you know Harry Smith, aka yes. the British Bulldogs. Yeah. Son. Okay. So, I'm like, yeah, I thought she was attractive. I didn't know what she was about. Yeah. Um, I knew that she was a heart, you know, a night heart from that family. So, I'm like, okay, she's got something to offer. So, but yeah, I mean, she really grew on me. I was, you know, I, no doubt about it. I, I liked her. Do you think she, uh, if, she, if she's in W longer, do you think she'd be in the Hall of Famer? Or, or I know it's a long way from that. I think she's a future Hall of Famer. Not anytime soon. Maybe a little bit down the road. Maybe when she's, you know, what, between 45 and 50? Kind of like what they did with Wendy Richter. Yeah. Um, I think that's when maybe she'll get inducted, if it's still around. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think, she's, I think she, she's definitely a, a Hall of Famer because, you know, she's a former Divas champion. Um, you know, her, she has, a, you know, a lot of, you know, really good credentials from, you know, when she got her first start, she, she used to wrestle in different countries like Japan and, um, you know, so, uh, and like I said, being a former Divas champion, being from the Hart family, I, I don't see any reason for her not to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but you never know, you know, but... I hopefully she gets to know. I mean, she had title shots, but never. I mean, she didn't win the belt yet. Hopefully, she'll win that soon. You know. I think. I think. Um. Let's just switch gears real quick off the subject. I, mean, I got one more, but what, uh, I know you are a fan of Andre the Giant, a little old school, and I wish he was alive today. A lot of people thought back then he was related to Big Show, but that's not the case because. Can you imagine if Big Show and Andre the Giant were tag team partners? Oh my gosh, that'd be a sick-ass tag team, huh? Yeah, it would. 
Big time. Yeah. But that would never happen. But, um, of course, Andre is the biggest athlete, you know. I mean, Big Show's okay, but I'm tired of Big Show. He needs to retire big time. I think him and Kane need to retire. Yes. But a lot of people have mixed emotions. Uh, I mean, I think Kane, this is just my theory. I know I mentioned like a broken record on my other podcast. He needs to go to NXT, help those guys out. He don't need to be on TV every other week, you know? I, well, that's a little sketchy right there. I don't know if he would, I really don't know if he should go into um, NXT. Oh. I think, you know, I think personally, I think the guy should. You know, just retire, kind of like walk off into the sunset, you know, so to speak. Yep. And uh, because he's had his time, Kane's had his time, you know. Yeah, Mark Henry too. Mark, you know, Mark Henry, you know, a lot of some of these people. I mean, I mean, I'd even be apt to even say, you know, I mean, John Cena's not that far behind. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean. He's had his time. Yep. It's time to make pay for new people, for the new generation. Yeah, pretty much. But some of you guys are so damn stubborn. And like, if someone says, hey, Chris, you need to retire. You've been here so many years. Are you going to keep going or are you going to retire? If the company tells you, the, if they force you to retire, are you going to go for it? Or are you just going to keep on going, Chris? Well, I mean, if, uh, you know, I mean, that all depends on the situation. I yeah. mean, you know, if I mean, if, you know, if they let me still work, then I'd be more than happy to keep working. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the same time, there is nothing wrong with getting a nice little retirement. Yeah, I guess I guess how the rest of us feel. They want to keep on, I don't know, just so many guys don't, don't need to be on TV. Like Mark Henry, I haven't seen Mark Henry in a long time, so I'm assuming he's going to retire soon. I, I don't know what to believe anymore on these rumors, you know? Yeah. So... Um, do you have the network? Who, who knows? Do you have the network, Chris? Are you are you happy with it or I, no? I do. I do have the network, but you know what, Rai Rai, right now, um, I'm just at a point where, you know, I don't really watch a whole lot of wrestling right now. Um, I did watch the pay-per-view last night. What do you think? But, <laughs> I thought it was a fun pay-per-view, to be honest with you. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Or, for a nice little filler pay-per-view, I mean, I thought it was pretty damn good. Yes. You know, I mean, um, I mean, yeah, there's like maybe t- there was two matches last night that I could have done without, but yeah, you know, and that was, you know, and that was the Intercontinental Championship match and uh, the uh, United States Championship match. I could have done without them. Yeah. But you know, I mean, because the thing is, it's it's who they faced. Yeah. You know? I mean, why was Zack Ryder? going for the United States title and why in the hell is Darren Young going for the Intercontinental title? Makes no sense. I don't know. Are well, you not a fan of those guys? Not really, no. I mean, Zack Ryder, I mean, he's okay. I mean, he held his own against Rusev. I'll give him that. But I'm not a fan of him. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're, these guys are just, uh, they're glorified jobbers. Yeah, you know, it's, it's sad, they but... Are, it, it, it is sad. They're glorified jobbers. I mean, when you have Zack Ryder winning the Intercontinental Championship and to lose it 24 hours later, what does that tell you? Yep. I, I think it's bullshit. I don't think anybody should lose the belt right away, you know, that quick. Yeah, I mean, Zack Ryder, when he won that Intercontinental title... I was surprised. Yeah. I was pleasantly surprised. But why they didn't keep it on him is beyond me. That's W. I mean, that's, him a, you know. Too much politics. Give uh, him a run. Too yeah. much politics. Yep. Exactly right. I mean, you know, they couldn't have given him, you know, an opportunity, a shot, or like a nice little run with the belt. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, I mean, it, and it's. It's looking to be more the same with Becky Lynch. Yep. Look at how she's being booked. Yeah. She's she's the she is the reality version of a redhead stepchild, okay? Yep. When somebody says beat you like a redheaded stepchild, that's what they're doing with Becky Lynch. I mean, you know, 
she hasn't had a whole lot of success since going to the main roster. Yep. She should have just stayed. She should have just stayed on NXT. Yeah. So um, are you are you um are you um fired for this brand split or you could care less anymore? Um, I do like the brand split because I think it gives more opportunity. Yes. And I'm hoping that that's what it accomplishes. Hopefully. Know? Um, but we'll have to see. You know, that's the biggest thing. We have to wait and see what happens. Um, you know, I mean, you know, will you know, like. Uh, you know, will some of these, you know, mid cards, you know, work, finally start working their way up? Guys that have never held like a mid card belt, you know, will they start shining? I don't know. Could happen. Couldn't. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna take a couple months. You, you're not gonna write. You're not gonna find out. Um, like tonight or tomorrow. It's gonna take a long time, Chris. Oh, it, it is gonna take a while. You're absolutely right about that. It, it's gonna take. A while to build things, you know, it's it's definitely not going to happen overnight. You hit the nail right on the head. Yeah. Anyway, switching gears. Um, I um, I don't know if I told you, but I pre-ordered the W2K17. The only reason I want to get it is the NXT one, the Finn Balor statue. That looks badass, you know? Nice. Yeah, so I'm going to probably do a video on it because I am a big fan of special editions. Especially, I mean, I am... But the last few years, they've been failing on it. But this year, they've been nailing it. Probably you saw the video on it, right? On YouTube about it? I haven't seen it yet. I That's another thing I still have yet to catch up with. Things. Okay. Um, I think if W books this right, I think Finn Balor could be a big star on a Raw roster. But on the other hand, he could be mixing a shuffle. Yes, I know that they just recently did a branch, but that doesn't mean nothing. They could totally fuck this up, you know, Chris? Oh, no doubt about it. They you know, they could screw it up, but I mean, you know, Finn Balor was probably one of the best NXT champions to date. Um, you know, taking away nothing from, you know, guys like Neville, um, Big E. But really, let's be honest, I mean, <laughs> I think ever you know, he's probably, the you know, one of the better champions ever since the days of, uh, you know, Seth Rollins being in, on NXT. Yeah. You know, and being and being champion, um, you know Finn Balor. I mean, he was great. He's a great champion, and uh, I hope I hope he does not get shot, you know lost in the mix. Um, I hope the WWE starts utilizing him. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I do believe he's on Monday Night Raw. So, might yeah, t yeah, tonight he is. Yes, you know he might leave the club. Who knows? Um, or he could reach his own personal success, you know, and, you know, become maybe the new Intercontinental Champion. Or no, I'm sorry, United States Champion because The Miz is on SmackDown. Yeah. Um, would you like to see, i like to see, what do you, th what do you think? Um, Finn Balor versus um, Seth for a match? Maybe at Mania down the road? I would like to see that down the road. You know, um, I mean, could that even, you know, that might happen this year. It could happen next year. Who knows? Yeah. But I think that is, that that would be quite the match. Yeah. You know, I mean, without question, that would be a really good match. Actually, my other match I want to see, I know it's never going to happen, Taker versus Finn Balor, like a demon kind of thing, because we're never going to see Sting versus Taker because Sting's out of picture now. So that, that's another possibility match too, you know? Yeah, but, you know, who knows if Taker's had his last match? We don't know. Um, I don't know either. And if he, does, if he does wrestle at WrestleMania this year, down in Orlando, Florida, who's he going to face? Yeah. You know, it's all it's all up in the air. Yeah, right now it's, yeah. Um, uh, Switch gears, have you ever been to, um, I know that you and Dave, and um, are you going to another live show pretty soon, right? Another what? Another show? Yeah, live show. Um, we're, yeah, we're hoping to. Okay. Um, you know, we're just wait. You know, we're just waiting a little bit. The tickets go on sale this Friday, so, um, I, you know, we we should end up going. Uh, you know, probably won't sit on the floor. Uh, this year, I mean, or this time around. Um, 
that could all depend. But uh, yeah, we are looking forward to uh, going to another show. Is it for Raw? How show is it? SmackDown this time? Uh, it's actually it's put on by SmackDown. Oh wow! So you guys see AJ and probably John Cena, whoever who was ever on that show, huh? Well, from what I understand, some of these people are supposed to be in Japan at that time. Oh. But card could be subject to change. Yep. Okay. AJ, guys like AJ Styles, um, the Usos, Becky Lynch, Natty. A lot of these people are on the. Uh, are on the roster to go. Okay. But, like I said, though, um, you know, the card could be subject to change. Who knows what we'll see. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Does it feel weird that SmackDown's on Tuesdays? It feels weird, huh? Um, kind of, because we're always used to seeing it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But, you know, uh, you know, now... You know, Impact Wrestling is going to be on Thursdays. Yeah. Um, SmackDown is going to be on Tuesdays. Yep. And, uh, you know, it'll immediately... Because this is the thing that they're doing. They line their... I think they really line... They line their ducks up in a row. We've got Raw on Monday night, SmackDown on Tuesday night, NXT on Wednesday night. And then yesterday was a pay-per-view, so we have uh, four days in a row of wrestling. Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And Thursday too. Yep. Yeah. Well, if you if you if you watch things like uh, Impact Wrestling, yeah, you've got four nights in a row. Yeah. But for me, that's that's too much. I I prefer, from my point of view, I might watch SmackDown once, and I'm not gonna watch it every single Tuesday because I don't know. But I gotta get used to it, you know. And W needs to stop calling it SmackDown Live. We know it's live, so knock it off, W. You know. Well, that's just it, you know. I mean, it is a lot, which is why I think, honestly, you know, I lost a lot of steam. I lost a, I lost a lot of momentum, a lot of interest in wrestling because with everything that they have, it became too much. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was, you know, Lucha Underground, great promotion. TNA Impact, really not that bad is what some people think. Um, but I mean, I was trying to juggle that all three of these companies and watch as much as I could, but I got burnt out. Yeah. So now it's just like, okay, I watched the pay-per-view last night. The pay-per-view was good. You know, will I watch, you know, Monday Night Raw and SmackDown? Maybe. I don't know. Because the thing is, I mean, I very well could because, you know, my, you know, of course, Shows like Arrow and Flash are not on yet. They won't be on, on until October. Oh, wow. Is so, that late? Not September? Uh, no. Damn. Um, Flash, Flash comes back October the 4th, and Arrow comes back October 5th. Wow. Which means DC Legends of Tomorrow is on the 6th. That's usually on Thursday nights. Damn. And Supergirl will be on Monday or will probably be on Monday nights. Yep. They got new so, home again. Yep. So, I mean, there's just so much going on, you know. Do you have a DVR, um, do you have a DVR Chris? I don't have DVR, but I do have um, Hulu, which all the, um, although a lot of those shows, especially what I'm going to like now, now that um, Supergirl is on the CW, yeah. um, Supergirl will be on Hulu, so if I miss it, I can go back and watch it on Hulu. Oh, so last year, I, so last year you don't have you don't have CBS, huh, Channel Two? No, I do. Okay. I have I have local channels. Okay. With an with it with an indoor TV antenna, so I I try my very best to religiously watch, um, you know these shows, you know Arrow, Flash, DC Legends, and Supergirl. I try my best to watch them every single night that they're on, but if I miss it. That's not a problem because, like I said, I always have Hulu. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, thank you very much. Oh, one more thing. How you know already. Yeah. Um, I made a video on this. What's your thoughts on the Raw and SmackDown's new logo? Really quickie. I want your quick thoughts. You know what? I don't like the Raw one. Uh, I really don't. I think it's ugly. I 
don't like the fact that the W looks like a upside down M. Yeah. The SmackDown the SmackDown one looks very generic. Yeah. But let's keep in mind, from what I understand, what I heard today, Raw has the new set, which hopefully SmackDown will have a new set. Yeah. So, so you know, let's not let a logo kind of distort, um, you know, what the show is going to bring. Um, you know, I just, I think, honestly, that, uh, you know, people could, I think so many, the creative team could have done better with the logos. Yeah. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy about them at all. Yeah, I, I'm just not going to pay attention. Maybe, just maybe, Chris, they will bring back the old school fist for SmackDown tomorrow night. I mean, no, Tuesday, yeah, tomorrow night, though. Yeah. Yeah, that would be absolutely extraordinary. I mean, you know, because uh, with the way the old school um, SmackDown was set up when it first came out, you had either the fist or you had, you know, the little Titan Tron on the side. Yeah. Um, and you had, like like I said, when, it de- when the show debuted, um, that stage was kind of cool because it was different. Yeah. You know, um, you know, especially, you know, with like the blue in the background, the blue and the white and the silver pretty damn awesome but you know who knows what you know what the new smackdown set's gonna look like i look forward to to seeing it um like i said i'll probably i might watch um you know for the first time in a long time i probably have to watch that tomorrow night, and i'll watch smackdown on um you know on uh, wednesday night probably yeah um, we'll have to see what happens We'll see what happens. Um, you want to plug your social media and go ahead and do it again, Chris. At the end, I hear you the first time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Boston Fan Seventy Nine V One. You can find me all over the social media landscape. Um, you know, both on let's see here, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Boston Fan Seventy Nine V One, and of course my Facebook at Boston Fan Michaels. Um, and uh, that's about it for me. Um, do me a favor. When this podcast is done, um, I'll put it on Skype, and then I'll put it in the description box for you, Chris. Okay, please. Ah, uh, sure. And one more thing, my friend named Gavin. Probably heard of him. He does my thumbnails. His link is down below. Check check him out. He recently met Paul Heyman and Scott Hall recently. Um, Chris. Yeah, he did. I. Used- he linked me all up into that. Um, you know, I saw his autograph. I saw his little video about him meeting Paul Heyman. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that's that, is that awesome, man? He's lucky, and I know it's very expensive to meet Paul Heyman and Scott Hall, especially in the UK because UK is twice as much money than the United States. Um, Christopher, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. So I let you go, and probably you got me eat, eat dinner and all that good stuff, huh? Yes, sir. Yep, yeah, that's what I'm going to go do. Okay. And um, in for a little bit of a relaxing evening. Okay, you take it easy, and I'll let you know when this is up, okay? I'll, I'll message you on Skype or, I mean, on Twitter and all that good stuff. So don't forget, give me all your links, and then that will help you that will help you out, okay, my man? Absolutely. Okay, thank you very much, and you, you have a nice evening, my friend. Yeah, you too, buddy. Thanks. Okay, good night. Good night.